All right, here are solutions for perfect problem six for math 251. Um, what we're trying to do here is kind of prove, come up with a few inverse trig derivatives. Specifically, I want, to, I want you to show that the derivative of arc sine of x is this thing, one divided by the square root of one minus x squared. I mean, it turns out that we can do that using just the fact that the derivative of sine is cosine and uh, some trig identity, some trig, some trig manipulation, not really identities. Um, so the way we do it is we start by setting this up as y equals arc sine of x. The reason we set it up like this is our goal will be to find y prime. If y is arc sine of x, then y prime is the derivative of arc sine of x. It's exactly what we're trying to find. So if I can somehow manipulate this and solve for y prime, I'll be done. I'll have my answer. But how can we do that? I mean, to make this y prime, you'd want to take the derivative of both sides of the equation, but we can't take the derivative of the right-hand side because we don't know the derivative of arc sine of x. That's what we're trying to figure out. That's not what we know. What we can do is a little bit of algebra before we start any calculus. You take the sine of both sides of the equation. You get to here. And now we've rewritten this equation in a way that we can take the derivative of both sides. Derivative of sine of y, well, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So the derivative of sine of y is cosine of y times y prime. This is the chain rule. The outside function sine of x, the inside function is y. y is a function. So we take the derivative of the outside, cosine, leave the inside alone. It gives us this cosine of y. But then we're not done. We have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is this thing, y prime. Derivative of x is just 1. So what we get for our answer is that y prime equals 1 over cosine of y. <clears throat> Which is great. We were trying to solve for y prime. We've done that. But we haven't gotten the answer we're supposed to get. And the reason why is we can simplify this. I mean, the first thing, it's weird to define the derivative of y in terms of y. You don't want to define something in terms of itself. We can fix that pretty easily because we know that y is arc sine of x. So instead of cosine of y, I can say my answer is 1 divided by cosine of arc sine of x. This is true. This is the derivative. They're both the derivative. This is the derivative in terms of x, which is a good thing. It's the right answer. Uh, it just turns out this can be simplified. So the way you simplify this is um, using kind of a little trig trick, I guess. Let's simplify cosine of arc sine of x. This little trick works um, anytime you have the trig function, uh, an inverse trig function composed inside a trig function. And the way you do it is with the little substitution. So pick any letter you want, t maybe, or theta. Let's let that be equal to arc sine of x. So you start out with this substitution. If arc sine of x, the thing on the inside, is just t, then cosine of arc sine of x is just equal to cosine of t. Seems like we're kind of cheating here. I just invented this t thing. You're right. We're going to have to undo this substitution at some point. Um, but if t is equal to the arc sine of x, then I can take the sine of both sides of the equation and get that the sine of t is equal to x. Um, sine of t, you might think, so ka toa, sine. If I can draw a triangle. If the sine of t equals x, that means I have some angle t, maybe I'll throw it down here, and its sine is equal to x. x is equal to x over 1. The sine of an angle is equal to the ratio of the length of the side opposite that angle to the hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is x over 1. So in my triangle here, this is x, this is 1. Opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1. What's going on here? Like, why are you drawing this triangle? Because remember, our final answer here, the thing we want is just cosine of t. And I've managed to draw a triangle that shows t. Using this picture, I can come up with the cosine of t, and then I'll be completely done. Cosine of an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. If I could figure out the length of this side right here, I'd be done, because I could then say the cosine of t is this side divided by 1. And I can figure out this length right here. And the reason I can do that is because... Anytime you have two sides, 
the length of two sides of a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean's theorem. So give this a name, maybe A. Pythagorean's theorem tells me that A squared <clears throat> plus X squared has to be equal to 1 squared, which is just 1. So if I solve for A, I get A squared equals 1 minus X squared, or A is equal to the square root of 1 minus X squared. Really, algebraically, there should be a plus or minus here. However, since we're talking about lengths, I don't even need it. A equals the square root of 1 minus X squared. It's this right here. I can now come back up to the top and say, wait, I was trying to simplify cosine of arc sine of X, right? That's what I'm trying to simplify right here. I called that cosine of T. This is T. The cosine of T is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of T is the square root of 1 minus X squared divided by 1. Now, if this is the cosine of the arc sine of X, I can then come up here and say that my final answer is 1 over. Instead of writing cosine of arc sine of X, I can write the square root of 1 minus X squared. Kind of a weird process, kind of working on one path and then jumping somewhere else. Um, but this idea is the exact same thing we'll do for these remaining two. Maybe I'll do these two a little bit quicker. For part B, we will again start with Y equals arctangent of X. Our goal will be to find Y prime. Can't take the derivative of both sides because we don't know the derivative of arctangent of X. We could take the tangent of both sides to get us here and then take the derivative. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So when I use implicit differentiation and note that I have the chain rule here, my inside function is the y. I get secant squared y, y prime is equal to 1, the derivative of x. So y prime is equal to 1 over secant squared of y, which is equal to 1 over secant squared of arctangent of x. Note that here I have something a lot like I had over here. Right? I have a trig function composed with an inverse trig function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify secant of arctangent of x. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to let t be equal to arctangent because then the tangent of t must be equal to x, or x over 1 if you want to view it as a fraction. If I know that the tangent of t is x over 1, then I know that if I draw a triangle, a right triangle, and put t down here, um, tangent is opposite over adjacent, my triangle looks like this. And if I know the lengths of two sides of a right triangle, I can figure out the third one. This squared plus this squared has to equal this squared. In other words, this is equal to the square root of... 1 plus x squared. So now that I have all these lengths here, I can go back up here and say 1 over secant squared of arctangent of x. It's just asking me what's the secant of arctangent of x, and then when you get that answer, square it. That's what it means to have a little squared right here. Well, and I just figured out, or I just decided, that arctangent of x is something I'm going to call t. So really, my answer will just be the secant of t squared. And by looking at this picture, I can figure out the secant of t. Let's see, secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. It means secant of t is the square root of 1 plus x squared. So secant of t squared is that thing squared. Um, but I can simplify that. The square and the square root cancel each other out, and I get 1 over 1 plus x squared. So what have I figured out? I got y prime equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. Um, y prime would be the derivative of arctangent. Derivative of arctangent, 1 over 1 plus x squared. Nice. Looks like I did everything right down here. Okay, one more time arc secant of x, sure, same strategy, Let's see, y equals arc secant of x, can't take the derivative of both sides, could take the secant of both sides to get secant of y equals x, if I did that, I can then take the derivative, 
So the derivative of secant, derivative of secant is secant times tangent. So the derivative of secant of y is secant of y tangent of y times y prime. Because y is a function, not a variable. Um, that's chain rule going on in there. Solve for y prime, you get y prime equals 1 over secant of y times tangent of y. Okay, um, y is equal to arc secant of x. So what I get is 1 over secant of arc secant of x. If I plug in arc secant of x everywhere, I see the letter y times tangent of arc secant of x. So what I need to do is simplify these two things on the bottom. Well, it turns out this one's pretty easy to simplify. Secant of arc secant, it's just x. Those are inverse functions of each other, so they cancel each other out. Um, you could do that by drawing triangles. You'll get the exact same answer. Um, but to save a little time, I'm just going to note that secant of arc secant of x is just x. Um, you can put absolute values in there. I'm just going to assume that x is a positive number, so we don't have to worry about all that stuff. So really, the only thing that I need to simplify is the tangent of arc secant. I, think I left out a letter down here. Arc secant. That yeah, just makes it worse. Of x. Uh, the strategy I'm going to do is the exact same strategy I've been doing. Start by letting t be equal to the inverse trig function, in this case arc secant of x. If t is arc secant of x, then secant of t must be equal to x. Or if I want to write it as a fraction, x over 1. Why would you want to write it as a fraction? Because it helps me drawing this triangle. Um, if I throw t down here, and this is a right triangle, secant. Secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse over adjacent. This must be x. This must be 1. If I know two sides of a right triangle, I can figure out the third one. Um, what I get here, call it any letter you want. Um, this squared plus this squared has to equal this squared. 1 squared plus b squared has to equal x squared. So b squared is x squared minus 1. 1 squared, but that's just 1. So b is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1. Yeah, I guess really it's plus or minus, but again, we're talking about length, so we can just call it plus. So that's what b is equal to here. What I'm looking for, what was my answer? I'm trying to simplify. I don't know where to write this. I'm trying to simplify arc secant of x. Right? Arc, maybe I'll keep it in line here. Arc secant uh, the tangent of arc secant of x. But t is what I'm calling arc, t, arc secant of x. So really all I'm trying to figure out is what is tangent of t. And now that I have this picture drawn, I can figure out what tangent of t is. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's this thing, the square root of x squared minus 1 divided by 1. And it's just this. So tangent of arc secant of x is the square root of x squared minus 1 what that's saying is instead of tangent of arc secant of x here, I can write the square root of x squared minus 1. So what I get is that y prime is equal to 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Looks like everything worked out. I've just proven three derivatives. Um, so I can stop this perfect problem.